Olivia Kumwa enters the transfer portal before we get to today's tough question brought to you by Craven Wings. So Olivia Kumwa enters the portal and I was surprised to see that come out yesterday. I did not predict that that would happen. I didn't really see Tennessee having any significant transfers and we want to discuss just how significant this one is and it's brought to you by Andy Mason real estate.com Andy Mason real estate.com will save you thousands if not tens of thousands of dollars in real estate because they've got over 40 years of experience right there in the Knoxville area Andy Mason real estate.com tell him off the hook sports since you were just all you got to do is fill out the form and he'll get in touch with you best service best prices in the real estate biz your thoughts on Tennessee facing a potential transfer in Kumwa? Yeah, this one was shocking. I did think they were going to lose at least one big man. They have J.P. Estrella and Cade Phillips coming in. And also Jonas Adu, I think, is going to take another huge leap this offseason because he took a huge leap last offseason. And I think that he is the – I think he's going to be the big man that everything goes through next year for Tennessee. So I really thought Euros Plavchik would actually be the guy to transfer and try to play one more year because I think he's got a year of eligibility left and play somewhere else. Kamwa doing it is a little interesting. He's really the only stretch four that Tennessee can truly rely on. Rick Barnes still loves the stretch four, and he uses Kamwa a lot in that situation. The only thing I can maybe think about this is, look, maybe Rick Barnes nudged him and is getting a – high profile transfer somewhere else that we don't know about. I mean, that that's, that's very possible. Or maybe Rick Barnes at his age has decided overnight. I'm going to do what Caleb Calhoun and Dave Hooker have been telling me to do. And I'm going to play a little more small ball from now on. <laughs> well, I'm sure. Yeah. It, and I can always, I can check IP addresses. We'll find out if he's watching, but I can go ahead and guarantee he is. Um, I am. Um, <laughs> To me, it's 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 a little strange that you would announce you're ready to bolt for a big man. Now, to me, if let's say Santiago Vescovi or one of the other guards said, I want to go because I want to play a more up and down pace. And I see what you're saying with the depth of the big man position. I just if you'd have made a list of guys that could possibly transfer, Caleb, given what's coming in and go ahead and address their, their class coming in because it's something to behold. But if you made a list of guys that were going to transfer out, where would have come off fallen on that list? Oh, near the bottom. No one has really benefited from playing for Rick Barnes more than Kamwa. He, he's got a, um, before Kamwa, you had Eve Pons, who really benefited playing three years from Rick Barnes. Kamwa's like right there with them. I mean, you talk about a guy that really has fine-tuned the role that is meant for him, which is the stretch four, which there's going to be a, I would have thought if he stayed with Barnes another year, there would be a spot for him in the NBA in a couple of years. I mean, a 6'8", 6'9", forward that can go out and guard the perimeter, that can hit shots from the free throw line, there's a spot for you on the on the bench somewhere in the NBA when you can do that. They Everybody needs a stretch four at some point. And I think this was really, really shocking. Unless he goes to play for Tom Izzo, who developed stretch fours better than anybody. I, it's It's kind of shocking that he decided to hit the portal – yeah, it, it, it's near the bottom for me. It's honestly near. I, I would have even pegged the Kai Ziegler answering before him. Wow. Uh, Michigan State, I mean, that that's a blue blood program at this point, um, even though they just have one championship under Izzo, which seems like they have eight, but they don't. Um, so they, 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 they carry themselves like they have eight. They do they're, like that, they're like the 2008 Celtics team, which I love Kevin Garnett, but Paul Pierce acts like they were a dynasty and that he's like got some credibility to speak on things like, bro, you won one championship, you all three together. Well, don't run the Celtics into the ground doing that. But do you think he would have those sort of options, Michigan State options, Duke options, North Carolina options, or do you think he's going to go to a school that basketball-wise is a bit of a lateral move from Tennessee? I, I, I don't see people falling over themselves to get him. I think he'll he'll be a guy that will fit in some programs. I used to always use this. In, in recruiting, I had my own recruiting rankings, okay? I had anywhere, somewhere, nowhere, okay? So a kid that I would evaluate, because I've I told you before, the two to four stars, I leave up to the experts, okay? Yeah, I can get a bit of a difference, but for the most part, if a guy's a, a, a four-star 
or a high two star that I leave to the experts and I call scouts and I get their thoughts. So I created my own ranking system. It's called anywhere, somewhere, nowhere. Anywhere means you're Nico or you are Arch Manning. You can go anywhere you want. You can call up Providence and say, hey, by the way, start a football program. I want to show up. And they'll be like, oh, okay. Uh, somewhere is you've got great options. You've got power five schools. Nowhere is you can't play ball at the uh, – at the, at the at highest the, level. At the highest level. I mean, you're going to go Division Two. I hate it when people correct me for saying Division One, Division Two, but that's still what it is. Come walk anywhere, somewhere, nowhere. Is it is at least a somewhere? Is he in any? Is he in anywhere? Yeah. You know, well, I'm with you. I think he's. I was throwing out the Michigan State thing as a possibility. I think the more likely possibility is one of the two things we first said. Barnes wants to adjust his system to play a little bit more small ball next year, and he's already planning that, or he's got a transfer coming in that we don't know about and that he's already working towards. I don't think Wait, well, let me stop you on one thing. Why do you believe that he would play more small ball? Okay, cuz I'm going to I'm going to play devil's advocate for a second. Tell me I'm going to be Rick Barnes. Tell me I should play more small ball. You want Sorry. me to tell you why yes. you should play more I'm, ball. I'm say say Rick, I'm your buddy. You should play more small ball. Rick, this year when Josiah Jordan James was banged up, you guys really stumbled down the stretch of the season because you were having to play a lot bigger than you usually did in the past. You were number two before that. Last year, Olivier Kamwa went down for the year in January, and you guys turned things around immediately and went and won the SEC tournament title and got a three seed in the NCAA tournament. Okay, first of all, I'm going to say let's just talk about this year. This year, <laughs> because you're right, and it's hard to argue against that. This year, though, I'm going to say to you, I got to the Sweet 16, and I had a ton of injuries. Zakai Ziegler at the most inopportune time. I want to continue to play big. You got to the Sweet 16 by default and through the luck of matchups. That's how you okay. got to the Sweet 16. Okay. My name's Rick Barnes. I'm going to go ahead and tell you right now that that's the way college basketball is going because the way the rules are, I'm not the only team that's playing this rugby style of ball, as Jay Billis likes to refer to it. This is where football is going. You're practically telling me to change my style that is taking advantage of a trend like you would tell Josh Heupel not to throw the ball over the park and run high tempo. No, you're fighting a trend. You go. You only got to the Sweet 16 because you got lucky enough to play another team that plays rugby ball, which is Duke. Also, look at the other teams that played rugby ball in this tournament. Purdue plays rugby ball. They just became the second team in history to lose to a 16 seed. Virginia plays rugby ball. They were the first program in history to lose to a 16 seed, and they lost to a 13 seed this year. Rugby ball doesn't take you that far in the NCAA tournament, coach. I'm just saying – Rugby ball has won one national title and was Virginia in 2019. And that 2019 Virginia offense is better than any offense you've ever coached. Okay. I'm still Rick Barnes. Why are you so hard on me, Caleb Calhoun? <laughs> because I want you to win a national championship to validate your legacy as a hall of fame college basketball coach. I've already had a great career. It doesn't matter. Of course, that's not true. Um, I, okay, he would throw so faith in, he, you got to throw faith in at some point. That's what Rick Barnes would do. Yeah. Do you really believe, though, and, and blame your players, do you really believe, <laughs> though, do you, do you really honestly believe that there is some mystery recruit out there or some mystery transfer player that can come in? Or is that just one of the things floating around in the aura of possibility? It's one of the two aura of possibilities. It's either that or it's it, either Rick Barnes has a guy he's bringing in or he's planning on changing up his style a little bit and he's kind of – any and Olivier could see that. I don't think it's something like Tom Izzo came calling and was like, hey, you know, want to play for a better program? I think Tom Izzo can get better players, like you said, to play that stretch for. Rick Barnes develop player, develops players, and Tom Izzo does too, but Tom Izzo develops a higher caliber of a player. <laughs> and so sure. Rick Barnes is going to get the – I always thought Rick Barnes, is, his best strength was, between me and you, Rick Barnes should never recruit a five-star. Ever. He should never recruit a one and done guy. He should take only three stars the rest of his career because the way Tennessee is at their most successful is if you get a bunch of three stars who have played together for two and three years and have developed under Rick Barnes, that's how you that's how Rick Barnes wins. I don't know why he ever tries to recruit at such a high level because he can't he's not good at mixing those guys in. Man, but yeah, I, I, I think that helps Rick Barnes. 
to be real honest with you, because I don't think the one and dones are going to be the type of guys that are as favorable to a program any longer. I think what you're going to see is the transfer and dones that come in for two years. They signed with a smaller school. I'm just going to throw something out there like a Murray State or something. And they're like, oh, I see. Well, you've got a training table at Tennessee. I get to eat filet. I get to eat shrimp and I get to play in front of uh 20 some thousand people i think that that's going to be the trend that you will see the bigger schools and could have a bigger impact on basketball than actually football i and and listen if rick barnes and i wrote about this on off the hooksports.com if he's not ready to accept that and he hasn't taken advantage of the nil transfers somebody's behind the game either the collectives that are all put together somebody is behind the game. I'm not sure that it, who that is, if it's Rick Barnes or not, but I, I, why has Tennessee not had the impact player come in, especially if we're having this conversation in November of a transfer in basketball like they've had with Nico? The cash is there. There's no question. And you could have a bigger impact. In football, I don't care how great you are. You're probably going to have to sit a year. There are exceptions. I know Nico may be an exception, but you're probably going to have to sit a year. You're, you're not going to have an impact because you have to have 10 other good players around you to compete for a championship. In basketball, that's not necessarily true. Um, you can have four average players around you and a special player. So if Tennessee doesn't take advantage of the NIL and basketball, be it transfer or actual high school recruits, I think you've got a real issue. And I'd encourage people to read that on offthehooksports.com because it's something that's a head-scratcher for me. I don't know where the disconnect is. <laughs>